Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Did you know that uh, you can support us on Patreon? You can. Yes. Anybody who gives us Patreon money, we reinvest back in the podcast. Yes. And uh, you, the return on your investment is us talking more. Yeah. Right? Th- us talking more, better, and clearer, possibly about more things. And sometimes live, if this works out. Maybe. Maybe. Cut it out if it doesn't work out. Okay. Patreon.com slash RetroYM, right? That's it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Yes. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast series about Xenogears. Tonight, for the first time in our lives, we sit in chairs and we tell stories, we share our feelings, and we wait until we are ready to die. My name is Chris. Hey, Eric. We've been in chairs this whole time, dude. Uh, theoretical chairs, mental chairs, the chairs that where we get closer to our feelings. I guess if you really think about it, this podcast is us getting closer to our feelings, or at least our specific feelings about uh, one particular piece of art. Fiction. I think once we reach 50 in this podcast, we'll definitely keep going. We should look into getting standing podcast desks. Oh, that'd be cool. Well, if we do get those, uh, those arms, those arms, we can always like ankle them up and stand up and then we can mm-hmm. get all animated and... Or hammocks. We can get podcast hammocks thought... and they, they would be positioned next to each other. We could just stare at each other with, in the eyes as we hammock in opposing positions. And sip on like coconut drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a terrible idea. Not if it's at the beach. Disc two. Before we get to disc two, Chris, I have two oversights and corrections to bring to the table. Are they egregious? I don't think so, but they they do need bare mentioning. First one is a correction on ourselves. Remember how last time Solaris blew up? Yeah. I was thinking about that and I was like, was the Soul 9000 in that? Should we have expected those guys to blow up in that? Like it's not. The answer is it's not. But like, where the fuck is it? I think the major destruction was done in in, in the vicinity of like Etronac, right? And like th- the compar- the whole thing crashed, dude. But yeah, you're right. And especially when, like once the gravity reverted to Earth's gravity, like everybody would would, would just gotten fucked yeah, up. Yeah, like but, if you rotate that thing like even five degrees, it's gonna throw the whole thing off. Like I assume Solaris as an entity was capitalized there. Yeah, like they talk about talking to the the ministry, like it's local in Solaris, so. I don't know if that's explained or what, but, or maybe they're in like the fishbowl ship, you know? I don't know. Not in the budget. Not in the budget. Not in the budget. My second correction. So we removed our limiters, right? We did. Both sets. Right. So does that make us no limit soldiers? (laughs) We no limit soldiers. Is that a correction? That's an oversight. That's a correction. Okay. That's, that's what we are now. Oh man. This is prime no limit time too. That had to be intentional. Break the seal, right? Yeah, it is. You're right. True. Hmm. Interesting. Mystical sitting in a basketball hoop. I guess it all depends on what the limiters were called in the Japanese script. Yeah, good point. I'm not sure if uh, Master P quite made it over to yeah. Japan. He lives here now in, the, in our city, right? You know that? You've told me that? I don't believe you. He does. Master P lives here no, in No, I would have seen him. I'm, I'm wearing a Gucci Mane shirt right now for some reason. He, he does a lot I, of community work. He invests in, in the... In, I don't believe you. No, it's true. How can that be true if I haven't heard of it? You've heard of it. He was in those, he was in those commercials. Yeah, like I watch TV, man. <laughs> He was on a billboard for two lawyers, like personal injury lawyers. Great. Yeah. Was one of them the hammer? No, no, no. He can't. Aff- well, yeah. Localpodcast.com. Local, local podcast. Uh, no, he, he is. It's because it's because he had family here that was re- relocated from Katrina. That's why. Yeah. Well, work on getting C-Murder out of prison, please. Okay. Initializing fake net. As of January 7th, 2020, Master P lives in Minnesota. So what's this chapter called? This chapter is called is Shot Down. But do you want to know what it's actually called? Yes. Is it called crashed, shot down with an exclamation point, or annihilation? Ooh, um, I'm going to go crashed. You're wrong. It's shot down with an exclamation point. And it doesn't have an exclamation point in nope. the English. No. Nope. Oh, interesting. Apparently nope. it's all capital letters, but it does not have an exclamation point. I'm not doing very well in this game lately, I don't think. Mm-hmm. No, I am working well to deceive you. Certain, like, There's been two or three instances where there's been just punctuation added, but the fact that like the last chapter is just called disgusting or... You know, those one yeah. word, highly descriptive nouns. Annihilation, I thought, would have got you. But Crash is good, too. So uh, what are we doing here in We're, this disc? I have a question. Do we need to have like a larger disc two unpacking conversation or do we just want to get into it? I kind of want to get into it because I think disc two, if you haven't played this before, plays on your expectations after Faye regains consciousness. 
like about how this is set up and what's it, what it's going to be. And then, oh no, it's something else. Or, yeah. oh good, it's something else. But if you want to frame it differently, well, I'm no, I, would, I, I, I agree with you. I think we should be, we should try to remain independent of disc two's particular reputation for being what disc it is. Two. Yeah. For being disc two and just analyze slash enjoy it as it ended up existing. Whenever you see popular threads about Xenogears on Twitter or the internet, Inevitably, one of the first five responses is, yeah, disc two, though. Yeah. So it's, it, I would say it's one of the biggest marks or maybe the most infamous thing about this game. Yeah. Which we're, we'll, maybe this podcast will determine once and for all whether that criticism is fair or not. <laughs> yes, we'll be truth. the final word, Chris. Yes. No, no one else is allowed to have an opinion after this podcast. Nobody's smarter than us. Yes, we're done. for everyone. Yes. Thank you to our patrons, by the way. All of you, even the ones we don't know that we have yet. The ones we don't know we do have yet. The ones we... Okay, Chris has been deep into Nietzsche to prepare for this podcast, so I'm going to go ahead and say face sitting in a chair. He is sitting in a chair and he's listening to a song, I guess, or a song is playing. It is called The Treasure Which Cannot Be Stolen, am I right? That's correct. Okay. So face in a chair with a spotlight as the pendant swings back and forth, but the pendant is inaudible. He's kind of floating in space, because it's not just a black background, There's, it's kind of starry back there, I think. Yeah, currently it's kind of starry. Occasionally there are different JPEGs rotated in, which yeah. I have taken strict note of. The text that it's about to hit us is delivered with weird ellipses and strange capitalization. It's almost organized like poetry. It is. It very much is. I would describe this first block of text as Faye unpacking his own existence. Yes. Would that be, was that fair? Well, he unpacks his own existence, but he applies dream logic to it. Yeah. Like in fiction, people, whether it's Star Trek or The Sopranos, people going into dreams, strange things happen and you don't necessarily have to rationalize the context because you were in a dream. Like, oh, Tony Soprano is not a mob guy. He's a lawyer staying at a hotel. Wow, weird. I have the whole block of text here. May I read it? Yeah, sure. So face sitting in the chair. Dreaming. I was dreaming. Perhaps it may have been a long forgotten memory. A dream. A memory. Things remembered when one is asleep. Things forgotten when one is awake. Where the deepest layers of memories become the outermost layers of one's dreams. Which are reality? Which are illusions? One cannot tell until one awakes. Or perhaps they are, at the same time, both truth and fiction. A vast nebulous with no boundaries. An emptiness equivalent to my own existence. I dreamt such a dream. A long, never-ending dream. I thought that was cool as hell this time. I did too. I was like, wow, we're, this, this, is, this is the first time we're really getting any sort of interiority from yeah, Faye at all. Like, that was articulate. Yeah, it was. And... It, it's really interesting, too, because he's it, throughout this whole conversation with himself, he's coming to grips with the fact that he has past selves. Yes. And through doing that, he becomes more of a character. Yeah. Kind of. The the past selves integrate. He doesn't assume their personalities, but it actually gives a personality to Faith. There is a writer for Deadspin. Oh. I think his name's Drew... I don't remember what his name was. We'll add that with the fake net. Initializing fake net. Almost their buddy. It was Drew McGarry. The article is called The Night the Lights Went Out. He was in a coma for a long time and then wrote about the experience, about how it's like a weird dream where there's some parts of reality that get piped into your head and stuff like that. Wow. And this just kind of reminded me of that, where you're still, your brain's still active and contemplative, but you don't really have a grasp on the natural world at the same time. That is interesting because Faye is literally in a, a short coma right Yes, here. he's out for three weeks, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So at that point, he... he He's trying to determine if what he's dreamt is real, trying to understand those elements of his past self, and then it cuts to the painting scene in the Nissan Cathedral. Sure. Before that, we don't know this yet, but that sequence just set the tone for disc two. Yeah. Like, it's this isn't a thing where he's in a dream. This is how it's going to be from now on. This Son. Is, this is reality. Let's go. Yeah, this is reality. Let's go. But yes, he goes to the, like you said, he goes to the Nissan Cathedral art room. And the first thing we see is just the, the name, Lacan. It's L-A dot 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 C-A-N dot dot dot. Yes. Like he's trying to remember who that is. The music box track, Far Away Promises, playing right here. With wind noises. Ooh, interesting. I didn't, I didn't catch that. Faye, at this point, I think this is the first time that we are really, can really be certain that Faye is starting to understand that he was Lacan in his dream. Yes. Because I think the, the previous time we saw, well, we've seen Lacan twice, I think. We saw him... Way back when we first went to the Nissan Cathedral, when they had that flash. And yeah, then we it saw, was a brief flash. And then we saw him during the Emperor Kane's speech. 
When right, he, when he fleshed out, he yeah. had some chats with Krellian. Yeah, but I think Faye's now coming to grips with this whole, his, his new his new existence. Yeah, it's not so much a dream. I mean, Faye interprets it as a dream, but he's just reliving a snapshot of reality. Yeah, and he seems like he might actually be experiencing the same emotions that Lacan was experiencing at this time, at this point in time. Do you think it's like part of the same cycle? It feels like it, because it, it kind of like flows in and out of Faye's narration of this, and it's it's, it's often hard to tell... When the text is floating outside of a text box, it's it's hard to tell if we're seeing Faye's interiority or Lacan's, and it may all be one and the same at this point in time. We're seeing Faye comment on Faye. But in the art room, he's painting Sophia, who is sitting in a chair for the painting. Faye calls her Mother Sophia, kind of as a joke, and they talk about quitting for the day. Then she tells Faye to call her what, when it's just the two of them? Ellie! Ellie. Ellie. He wants to be called Ellie just like in the old days. Yeah, apparently, I don't know if this is now or later, but Mother Sophia is just a title that is bestowed upon someone. But yeah, this is where we, like you said, get to see Faye as as a developed person and not whatever weird imprint of a person he's been for the current duration of Xenogears. And what we know about the war of 500 years ago adds a dimension and gravitas to his character through Lacan. So, is it time to cut back to Faye sitting in the chair reflecting upon this briefly? Yes, Far Away Promise continues. And this is all... In addition to developing Faye's character, it's all very effective in terms of reminding us of these things. Because if you're playing this game in a more compressed time frame, like if you're playing this game over the course of two weeks, Mm. like you may have kind of forgotten some of this stuff because you have so much in your brain because this game introduces a lot. We've been playing this game over the course of six months, six months, seven months. And also we've carved out a lot of time to talk about it along the way. So it's very easy for me to remember some of, some of that stuff that happened early in the game, but I think it's just an effective tool of reminding the player, hey, this is another part of Faye that we foreshadowed a long, long time ago. Yeah, most people don't write obsessive notes about a game, then talk about it, then listen to the finished product two or three times to make sure it sounds correct. Yes, most people are normal. So yeah, Faye suggests that this whole sequence suggests that this is the uh, Halcyon days when nothing else mattered and it was just the two of them. And they're kind of past that now and reflecting back toward that when Sophia tells Faye to just call her Ellie. It reminds me of a simpler time. Yeah. Again, as, as Faye kind of transitions back into us seeing this flashback again, again, it seems that through that text, he's beginning to accept the, his like his new transmigrated self. Oh yes. Faye's like, beginning to accept yes, it. Yes. Yeah. Faye is. Yes. Lacan to me isn't, is denying what is happening in reality. It's like yes. when it's like he has the adult responsibilities that he's realizing he has and he doesn't want them anymore. And it's one of those things where he clearly didn't realize the good times were the good times. Yeah. And which we don't know anything about, but we are assumed that the before times were better than what they're going through now. He needs paint. Yeah. More paint. So he's got to go back home to get more paint, to mix it, I think, specifically to, I, I guess, I guess it's a, it, it's a creation. I, I think he, this was mentioned too during one of the, uh, the Krellian yes, slash Yes, when Lacan. he was back yeah. in Nissan. Which is weird because that's where that took place. So I guess he just walked across that river to go get paint. I don't know. It's it's all very... It was in Nissan. Yeah, it was. It was. But it's weird that he would need to go far because Ellie offers to send him back with one of her followers, the Cahal. The Cahal. Which I think the only other time in the game in which the Cahal are referenced are in one of those Sister Agnes rooms early oh, in the game. Mention, in like option, in the library? Yeah, NPC dialogue. Do you but know what, to get in a gear to drive him home or whatever. Do we, uh, on that episode, do we talk about what Cahal means? No. I've got two definitions. The first is a local governing body of former European Jewish communities, members administering religious, legal, and communal affairs. Interesting. And then second, the Cahal, Q-H, excuse me, Q-A-H-A-L, which is Hebrew, which was a theocratic organizational structure in ancient Israelite society, according to the Hebrew Bible. In later centuries, Cahal was the name of autonomous government of Ashkenazi Jews until being abolished in the mid 1840s. So deep cut Takahashi. Deep cut Takahashi is his middle name, I guess, or it is now. So is this set up as like intended to be a prequel for when he went and met Krellian? Because he specifically told Krellian that he needed paint, which yeah. is the same kind of story he sold Ellie. Yeah. I th- this is maybe, Sophia. This is the same. Yeah. This is the same. Uh, or the first part of that story. As the screen dims, Lacan says he lied about being out of paint and he feared he would finish the portrait. He wanted to buy time. And I've kind of experienced that when you're on like a a weird, not so much anymore, but when you're on a a weird date with someone you're not fully comfortable with and you want to keep hanging out, but it's like time to go a little bit. So when I was younger, I bet I found that 
vaguely romantic and not like Garth said, live in the now man. When when that commentary appeared on the screen where he was talking about how he lied, did you read that as Lacan admitting that he lied or Faye knowing that Lacan lied? Faye, I want to say that Faye knew Lacan's interiority because he could, I bet if I got to watch tape of myself doing some stupid shit, I would understand. Look at that idiot doing that yeah. shit because you're the same person or whatever, but. That's the way I read it because it, it, it seems like it flo- like especially in this in this particular portion of the uh, of the game, I guess the very this very first portion of, of this too, it flows yeah. from Faye into Lacan and back without really without us really feeling that transition. Yeah, so I, I think it's really effective at sort of creating that seamless uh, life stream for lack of a better term. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven reference dot com. Oh, I thought you said live stream. Oh, no. live stream's pretty good too. <laughs> Livestream is definitely what you call one man interpreting a past version of his soul. I'm going to talk through Chris's cough on that one. Thanks Fuck to our, you. Thanks to our patrons. We can multi-track record so I can cut those coughs out. I bet I mean, you'll forget. Yes. So then we go back to Faye in the chair. And he says, yeah. a life of a man named Lacan and the lives of countless other men, all but dreams. This is where I wrote down, are we experiencing Faye's feelings or Lacan's feelings or both kind of merged into, into that, one, Maybe, that one stream? That's my prediction for the thesis of disc two. Is it, I mean, were any of the other presence of this, of the contact aware of their past selves or is this, is the final one merging all into the same person? Oh, so was, was, was Lacan aware of Kim at any point in time? Yeah. Aware of Kim or someone else. Yeah. At a certain, I mean, there's, there have to have been more than three of these people, but yeah. I think we only see a max of four in this video game. He says the dreams are hard to remember when you're awake, which true. Chris, what percentage of your dreams nowadays do you remember? Oh, I would say five to seven percent, maybe. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's like it's a little bit when I wake up and then gone because you're trying to remember what's a memory in the first place and your brain just overwrites it. Cause... What's the last glimpse of a dream that you remember in your life? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. I saw Rick Pitino at a museum recently. Oh, in your dream? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Did you like, we're like, hey, Rick, what's up? No, that was just, that was Did, it. it. You just we, knew you were at a walk, museum and he, he was, was walking there. one way. I was walking the other way. He was with his family. So I'll let him alone. God. Well, that's a perfect uh, tap into Chris's psyche, I yeah, guess. I guess so. Still not over him. The only thing that never changed was Faye's love of one woman. And then what's funny about that to me is her name didn't change. It's always been Ellie, apparently. Yeah. I wonder if that's part of the, the grand system. Like, is it baked into her DNA that she always gets called? Like, how does that work? Yeah. Like, how does, how do her parents know to yeah. call her Ellie? Like, that's something that I think they deliberately don't explain because you can't. Yeah, exactly. Unless it, you want to pull out the fucking midichlorians controlled the DNA of her parents to influence the name. Yeah. In, in that, in that little diatribe about loving one woman, he, he, he says, now that I'm awake, those countless numbers of long heart trending dreams are almost impossible to remember at all heart trending have we heard this word before heart rending or heart trending heart trending heart rending heart rending heart rending heart rending rending. there it is it's heart rending we've heard that yeah we've heard that word before i mean my google doc didn't underline it so i was like that must be a word i've never never heard it before Uh, rend means like devour right like take apart tear apart and tear up i I guess so yeah yeah Yeah. that that, that seems to be the, the root of that if we're wrong somebody will correct us fake net or otherwise i wish uh, it would have addressed why Faye's name kept changing yeah that's true because that's i don't know i mean it doesn't really matter i guess like have they all been Faye, or is this the first Faye, or or what it's weird Faye at this point in time seems to come to some sort of resolution that the dreams have changed him making him understand what his purpose is yeah, gave him purpose he's Made creating him know what this, he has to do is this the moment where like jesus realized that he was jesus most likely because which I did look that up last time. From February 2020's Patreon episode on Sidon. There's no right information in the Bible where he realized that. He, he just, just kind of starts off at age 30. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so I think with, with Faye being our Christic character in this game, I think at this point he's like, okay, I have a purpose that is not just me fighting wolves and taking baths at Sidon's house, right? Yeah. Like, he's he, beyond that now. There's more than this. He says that his dream was a memory of his soul, which... That's an interesting way to look at that. Is a soul is a memory transfer device? Chris, do you believe in a soul? In real life? Yeah. No. Yeah, me neither. There's no such thing as a soul. <laughs> I don't know why we just established that. But. <laughs> Not really. I mean, no. I mean, the waveform of my brain is, 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 is just the waveform of my brain. Yeah. And I, one, I can't wait to die. Yeah, it's going to be great. So how do you feel about duality of uh, in storytelling, Eric? Can you, you mean duality as in... We're about to repeat something with a different perspective? Yes, sort of. Cool. Yeah. 
Because who's sitting in the chair now? The same shit from Ellie. She's sitting in the chair now. The same music and almost the same words. Yes, I have that full one again, but it changes a little bit. Do we want to go through it again or do you... Yeah, let's go through it again. There's a, a few interesting things in here. Okay. A dream. I was dreaming of a dream, or perhaps it was a memory from a distant past. A dream. A memory. Those words I was unable to convey. That day. That time. Those thoughts I was unable to carry out. Words and thoughts. The connection between the two. Without words, thoughts cannot be conveyed. Without thoughts, there are no words. They are both as vital as each other. They can never be divided. Like the wings of angels. Like a man and a woman. An unchangeable destiny. Feelings one wishes could change. Meeting that person who could change me. And watching myself change. I dreamt such a dream. A long, never-ending dream. What are the words that Ellie was never unable to convey? Are those the words that we're about to see Sophia kind of get hung up on here pretty soon? I think so. Kind of realizing her her place in her necessary the necessity of her to sacrifice herself, even at a smaller scale, or for it, what her duty is. It, or it, no, just in that room, like her seeming like she wanted to say something to Lacan to be, you know to, to to break the wall down between them and and oh and right. Just, be say, together say something actionable yes. and actually just get it over with yeah because that, that that's the scene we go back to we go back to that painting scene and ellie slash sophia is discussing about how she was destined to be this sophia figure regardless of what she wanted to happen right, right? it's it's the fate of any kind of princess fantasy did you what, what did you notice anything about how the scene is framed differently than, than before you mean uh, like uh, as far as the set dressing goes just the perspective the, Not- cam- the camera angle no, is it different? It's over Ellie's shoulder versus being facing Ellie. So we're kind of looking. Are, do you mean in the art room or, or before she's? I'm talking about in the painting room. Sorry. Okay, I'm yeah. not there. I'm still. She's still okay. in the chair. I wanted to talk about that a little bit more. Okay, yeah. Actually, so when she says like a man and a woman in Wings of an Angel, that to me is a clear reference to the anima animus angels in the cathedral. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then uh, much of it mirrors Fa- the first part is almost identical to Faye's, and then second, it, a lot of it hinges on her needing to be changed by Faye. Why does she need to change, and why does Faye not need to change? Well, I think part of that, I think there's, there could be two explanations here. One, sexism. Yeah, that was my initial thing, is the man has to fix the woman or whatever. Yeah, but two, that's that's sort of how a lot of the Gnostic readings work. where Justified sexism. Yeah, exactly. Justified sexism. Cool. Where, Almost like it's built into a system of... Yeah, uh, the fall of Sophia created, materi- created the demiurge in the material world, and Sophia has to wait for, I think we talked about this a long time ago, has to wait for the 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 Christ Aeon to come sort of unlock that final element of, of humanity in order to ascend beyond the false God. So dude, that's how that was written. And that's how this is written. So I don't think that was an accident. Yeah. It's very intentional. But also, I mean, also when you're making a commercial product in 1998, the main character is probably going to be a man. Yeah. Especially when the target audience is assumed to be teenage boys. Yeah. I think that, like, had I known what the words Demiurge or Christ Aeon were in the late 90s, that absolutely would have been my screen name. <laughs> Christ Aeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too, maybe. That's, that, or, you know, it'd be Christ Aeon 69X or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, then we go back to the Nissan Cathedral art room, and similar to Ellie's speech, it starts, we slowly realize it's replaying the same scene over yeah. again. This time it's from Ellie's perspective, uh, where she says she was called Sophia. And then, like, uh, did we get the last time that Sophia was a symbolic name? Did it, like, extend out the scene a little bit this time? I think it's it's just, it's just a little bit different. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. She, I, I know we, we do get some new stuff here where Ellie talks about how she loves her true name because that is what he called her, assuming that she's talking about Lacan. The contact, yeah. Yeah. And then Ellie, I'm talking about Ellie from the past. Yes. Ellie then wonders why she and Lacan could never be themselves together it seemed like and this is very evident in the in the original lacan scene where there was some sort of formality or barrier built up between them where they couldn't sort of really get to know one another their two their lives are too directed to behave like normal dating teenagers yeah but at the, at the exact same time like lacan was trying to delay the inevitable by saying he was out of paint at the, but, but at the same time sophia asked lacan to paint her because she wanted to be with him and they just yeah. they couldn't quite get beyond that little 
you know, that teenage wall, so they to speak. Need, uh, couples therapy for celebrities. Yeah, exactly. Was this happening? I guess that they're at the exact same ages, right? So is, this makes it seem like more of a destiny thing of when all this would happen. It makes me wonder if Kim was also the 18 year old scientist. Yeah, true. Could be. I mean, given the lifespan of Zeboim civilization, that would have been would a, a more yeah. accurate thing. It's kind of sad too, because yeah. it's sad to think about because there's like, a, there's a lot of moments throughout Xenogears where those particular walls between Faye and Ellie of the present were almost enough to keep them apart. Like think of all the times that they were separated due to various circumstances. Like for example, when Faye had to leave her behind at her house in Solaris and yeah. all the times he told her to leave the military throughout the game in which there was a chance that those two would never cross paths again. But is it just part of the system that they would automatically cross paths again? Yeah. No matter they're what? just destined to just intertwine on their, their timelines. But it didn't, it didn't always happen though in the, in the past timelines though. Right. Like, I mean, at some point, Lacan and Sophia fell apart and I'm assuming at some point Kim and the other Ellie fell apart. Plus at some it's time. been 500 years since then. So yeah. we have to assume, I don't, I don't know if contacts are born simultaneously each time. Oh, no, so no the, not contacts, but if Faye, the, the Faye presence and the Ellie presence, for lack of a better word, are just reincarnated, you know, because Lacan and, and at least the old one lived longer than Sophia did. So yeah. was her birth again delayed until his presence passed on, even though it kind of didn't? Or were there just, you know, 30 or 40 different generations of these characters that just yeah. never met? Yeah, I never like, made an Just impact. the whole concept of like this, you know, the soulmates who never meet. So it's like the Dalai Lama type thing where you have to figure out, I don't know. I don't know. It's sad. Yeah, it's so, it's sad that you're predestined to 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 love somebody and then you ne- you'll you'll never get to meet them. Has the is the most amount of time Faye and Ellie have spent together in this game in this life when they when Faye was trying to fish with his hands? <laughs> um, yeah, except for being naked in tubes for three weeks together, I guess probably. But they're in separate tubes. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, then we go back to the Nissan Cathedral art room. Ellie wonders. Did you already do it? When Ellie wonders when it started, when he refuses her, the walls between them, their positions, yeah. their circumstances. Okay, to me. That read is Lacan's refusal to recognize any of those as my dude is in fantasy land. Yeah. And he prepares this abdication to clear his responsibility and it drives his character's downfall. Like he, this is kind of, in my opinion, where it starts his weird obsessive thing, which has dro- driven his presence to stay on as yeah. Groff. Like it, this is where like the, the fall, in my opinion, starts. That's, that's a very interesting reading there. I, I, I read it as, pure sadness but you're seeing it as like a, almost a, a villain's origin yeah, story because almost. ellie blames herself and that's what people with low self-esteem do and she wanted to t- yeah it lacan wanted her to paint the way she really was but that was the way she really was and he just wasn't willing to accept that reality yeah anything else on that before we go back to present ellie in the chair uh, yeah my next is ellie chair pendant yes there's a lot of similar dialogue here as to to, to phase closing comments on on his uh on his last go around is this the one where phase uh is in the like in a JPEG in the background? Yeah, okay. yeah. And she talks about how she loved one man. He did not change, only his name. She specifically calls out the fact that his only only the man's name changed, yeah. which we talked about that before. That kind of confirms there's been multiple. Yeah. It match, there's one person on this world who you can love. Their name changes every time, yeah. but they look the same. Yes. Good luck. And they often have the same clothes. Yeah. And then, of course, Ellie, too, is, is realizing her larger purpose and then also talking about the memory of her soul, the dreams being the memory of her soul, I believe. Yeah, they're twin dreamers. This also mirrors the destiny of the anima animus as a pair of one-winged angels bound together. Yep. We back. We're back to phase baby dick. Uh, yeah, the, what a shot, man! Like that has to be a funny thing, right? Like we we see Faye in the the Banta tank, and it's just his tiny ass dick in full view. Yeah, and his open eye sprite are just fucking hovering and like he's wide awake. Yeah, naked in a tube. He's staring at us. Uh, the valley where the wind is born is playing with bubble noises in the background. Yes. Why he, didn't they close his eyes? <laughs> I, I, I guess because it's signifying that he's he's now awake. Like, I guess. All these things were happening while, while, while Faye and Ellie were asleep. And I just, like, that's his dick. We're yeah. two years away from Chris Redfield can't smoke a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah, he's in a tube and there's a blue man there. who serious uh, old man. Yes, he looks like a healthy gazelle ministry yeah, member. Yeah, a sort little of. bit. He's, 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 he's a wide boy. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty wide. He's a monkish blue old guy with possibly demi-human with, with cloth covering his mouth. Yeah. He's seated at a candlelit table with a bunch of books. Yeah. Wasn't someone here in this lab in a flashback? Yes. And was it Krellian? It was. I have a note on that later. Okay, because at the time we were like, where the fuck is that? Is that Krellian's lab? No, it's wherever this is. Yes. This uh, blue man, his his name for the time being is Mysterious Old Man. Yes. 
And Faye, apparently, according to this guy, has been healed. And the blue man tells Faye that he's been here for three weeks. Yes, he's been sleeping in the nano reactor. Do you know what's interesting about three weeks right now? Is that we haven't done a podcast for a regular, for our playthrough in three weeks. Yes. We actually had a three-week break while Faye had a three-week break. Isn't that cool? Precisely. Yeah, I played this, started playing this last Sunday. So that was exactly three yeah. weeks. That's pretty good. It does sort of feel like we're waking up from a long dream. Xenogears is like my life. It is like our lives, man. But it is cool to like have that break and then that little, you know, like, a, like almost like a soft reset yeah. in, in your play through this game. And On the it, disc swap too. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that when I played this game originally, I don't know about you, but almost any game that had had a, had a, a second or a third disc, it's like you want to put that in right away because you know some more shit. Yeah, go some down. more shit on that. Yeah, so play Panther Dragon Saga. The first disc is over in an hour and a half. Oh well, cool. Um, but yeah, it's. I was thinking about that earlier today, actually, and how. When you think back of Xenogears, after you've played Xenogears for two decades, you're like, oh, the desert sequence, that's a long way into the game. Oh, Nortune's a long way into the game. Babel yeah. Tower, that's like way into the game. But when you play this shit, like, I think our perspective on time's getting messed up because we've been playing this game for eight months. Yeah. And stuff really does feel like a long time ago. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's messing with my sense of time pretty bad. So anyway, um, the guy does some computer hacking skills and get him out. And then it seems like... At this point, it's like, oh, the Fey in the chair was a framing device for dealing with Fey and Ellie's unconscious states. Yep. Haha, ha, cool. I'm glad that's done. Yeah, it's over with. We're never going to see that again. What a neat, like, one-off sequence. Remember, we were in prison for a while, and then we yeah. were in a coma for a while? Well, time to move on to the next thing. Yeah, we're, we're done with that. Forever. If Fey wants to know this guy's name... Yeah, but what happens? He doesn't know. He forgot his name. I don't know my fucking name. Yeah, fuck, it doesn't matter. But that he used to be called Tara, one of the three sages of Shavat. Yes. Ellie... There's also on the tube. As the camera pans over, we find out. Fetal She's position. There. Yes. She is taking longer to heal because her wounds are slightly worse. Yeah. Or actually much worse. Yes. For that matter. And the blue man, Tara, tells Faye to stop staring at the naked girl. Yeah, he admonishes us. I yes. mean, uh, uh, Ellie's nudity is not depicted in this game, at least much like Faye was. Yeah. I, Faye should have had like the Borat black bar that went down two feet. <laughs> So as that happens, uh, Ellie's sprite rotates to face Faye as Tara walks out the back door. Yep. Faye does not jack it to her before we take control. Thankfully. The, the, the Evangelion par parallels have ended. Yeah, like I, after watching Evangelion so recently, like that could have definitely gone to an uncomfortable place right there. And perhaps in the remake, it, no, there, no one's, no one's going to no. jerk off in a hospital bed in a video game yet. No, hopefully not. Oh, okay, so... um. Tara goes through that door, and then we follow him, and who's here? Hey, it's, uh, Saiten. Saiten always shows up. He always shows up. Are we, I, I, I wrote how down- How do you find me here? How do you find- Well, I wrote down, I'm, ha I'm happy, am I happy to see- I'm happy to see yeah, him. Yeah, I guess. It's I been three weeks, man. Like, who else would show up? Can you imagine if it was right. Emeralda by herself, and you're like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing here? That'd be funnier, actually. Yeah. I, I had to get Kim. Kim's here. He's happy to see us, too, I think. Yeah. And he tells us that we were very lucky to stumble upon this research facility, but- Tara corrects him and calls it a man's hideaway. Yeah, dude. Just like this basement isn't a bedroom, it's a podcast studio. <laughs> <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry about that. No, it's all right. I, you know, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. So, uh, yeah, of course. You know, only, uh, you can only call it a man's want, hideaway man. if you've got a slippy toed action figure sitting over there next to a bottle of bourbon. Tara, uh, yeah. Tara uh, offhandedly says he found a couple with blood all over all them. All bloody. Yeah. And, and Faye quickly says, A couple? A couple? Me? Oh, you're my girlfriend? What's interesting about this is later we learn that's not true. Yes, it, that's very interesting that you say that. Tara says the nano reactor heals things, but it could also create things, and confirms it's the same tech that Krellian is messing around with in Solaris. Yes, and that 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 is when it triggered my memory of 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 those flashbacks. I think it was a flashback within a flashback within the Lacan flashback of him being like with these tubes, saying like with this she'll always yeah. be okay or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of the Anakin Skywalker thing. I you know you can resurrect yeah. people that kind of downfall. So this confirms that Tara was Krellian's teacher, and it. I wonder if Tara, if Tara left Shavat and left that life behind because he feels responsible for what Krellian turned into. Because it's, without the tech he'd helped and developed, none of this shit would happen. Maybe all the sages, well, at least the two sages that we, well, no, we, we we've met Gaspar, but he he's still in Shavat. Mm -hmm. But Balthazar, he's like, fuck this, I'm going to live in a cave. Yeah, he said, fuck all of society. Yeah, I mean, they both kind of did, like the vast woods and the caves. That, yeah. That's where you go to get seclusion. Yeah. There's some guilt on the sages. Maybe Gaspar is only staying staying in Shavad because of his all, own guilt. There's guilt, and then we'll we'll see later. There's bitterness too. Like yeah. neither 
Tora nor I guess Ball are very happy with Shavat. No, not at all. Which is interesting because for us, they're still, you know, in opposition to Solaris, they're like the good sky country. Yeah. Do you have anything else for inside Tara? Oh, no, there's there's more. The buzzer goes off, which means Ellie is done. So yeah. her much severe wounds needed about five more minutes in the microwave. Exactly. Depending on how much, how quickly you mashed X. Yeah. Tara tells us to wait and goes to fetch Ellie. Yes. And it tells us to go get some fresh air once they are reintroduced. Mm-hmm. The treasure which cannot be stolen is playing in the woods. It's back. It's the Black Moon Forest assets. It is. But where there's like a chimney in the background. Yep. So what did you think they were standing on here? I thought they were standing on the roof. Okay. I thought they were standing on bioluminescent mushrooms. Okay. Because I didn't know that Torres' house is this entire map. Yeah. Like he has a shotgun house in the woods made yeah. of clay and dirt and stuff. But they're on like lit up parts of like chimneys. It's like a weird kind of natural lighting thing that my dude, like maybe he's like smashed the glow in the dark asses out of lightning bugs and yeah. just packed them into this thing. Not that I did that when I was a kid, and I don't know anything about that. Faye is talking about how he's having the, the same feeling that he had when they first met, that sense of familiarity. I mean, yeah. they, they know each other now, but it's something deeper is happening yeah, and with him now. Faye's immediately paranoid because he's worried that Ellie would have forgotten everything in her coma. Yeah, that's true. And if you recall, Faye, remember he suddenly knew her name when they first met, like when that oh, yeah. naked you didn't rat know man it, attacked. Yeah, yeah. Naked mole rat man? Uh, no, it was a naked elf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, man. Yes, yeah. the naked elf that yeah. Faye beat the shit. Or no, did, who beat the shit out of that? Was that Faye? Yeah, th- yeah. yeah. It, 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 one, it one shot at Ellie and then he beat it up. Overpowered. The, maybe she couldn't beat Hammer Man. I don't know. And he said, like, don't touch Ellie or something like that. Yeah. Faye does tell Ellie there's something different about her. And then Faye experiences the deja vu feeling of feeling like he's met her somewhere before in some place. And I was like, dude, put it together. You know what this is. But that was dream logic and he yeah. doesn't remember. That's true. This is going to inform his psyche, not necessarily his active persona. Good point. They discussed the warm feeling that they yeah. both had when they were shot down. I guess that's blood, or I guess that's maybe that, like, warm destiny or something. Well, I was thinking it was the actual physical water tank they were in. Yeah, maybe. Like, after the traumatic experience and they're, they're in the recharged microwave bathtub. Yeah. Then that's where the warmth comes from, or, they're, you know, more metaphorically, they're trying to discover their past selves in their brains, yeah. and that brings the satisfaction of warmth. They are... About to share a moment here. Yeah, dude. They're getting like to that awkwardly close kiss thing. Yeah, but then Tara pops out and he's like, yeah, it's time to come back in, even though yeah. it's been 45 seconds. He hits the pan and says dinner's ready. Yeah. And then that's when I learned we were actually on top of Tora's house and this whole thing is his house. It was like a pullout shot where I was like, oh, yeah. okay, Yeah, it's cool. weird. So then we're in Tora's house again. Yeah, we go back in the house and Tora's, ki- I-, I noticed Tora's kitchen's kind of awesome. He's got this cool stove in like the middle of his, his kitchen island and stuff it's like that. It's a pretty sweet bachelor pad. Yeah. He's playing Singing of the Gentle Wind in there. Yes, he is. And we go back into his back into his tube room, and he smashes us in the face with a mission. Yeah. Like, with no warning, he's uh, he's ready to send Faye, Ellie, and Sighton on a mission to spread all of this nanotech shit around the world to break the seal of everybody, which I guess yeah. is, are those limiters he or says something? this could revitalize the world. Yeah. Like, I think he sent us out there to get the fresh air to be like, see, this is what it could be like and fresh and nice for everyone. Yeah. But yeah, he's kind of, he does give us a mission. He, he tells us about the mash driver that could help do this by launching into the upper atmosphere. Yeah. Which is convenient. There's some ancient equipment out there that still works that could do this. Yes. Why well, would I mean, someone leave that maintained? Why would they? Hmm. Yeah. I wonder why. Well, I mean, last time we needed some ancient equipment, we just had to go through a huge dungeon and, and press a bunch of buttons and need, needed two matching eyeballs and all this kind of stuff to get yeah. through it. This time, not going to be so complicated. Like, yeah, no one knew what this is. The Large uh, Hadron Collider was for. It's for Gordon Freeman. He he, he then gives Faye a wristband. Yeah. It's going to in- infuse our epidermis into the brain. Epidermis and, means skin, right? I guess. Perhaps. Initializing FakeNet. It's more commonly used to describe plant skin, but sure. Thanks, FakeNet. You're welcome. Uh, then he's, he's trying to explain what this shit does, and he says... There, they refine the SSRI intracerebral substances, such as serotonin, that control emotion. Tara is hooking us up with Prozac? Yeah, I mean, SSRI is an anti- antidepressant. I, I would ha- I would have to look that up, but I work in an industry where I would need to know what that is, so... ChrisJob.com. Yes. Tara says we should go on this mission because we're young and he's old. Did you, yeah, did you notice that after he explained what, all, all this stuff to Faye, that 
a quick double question mark yeah. thing pop to both Faye's head. Like he explained all these big, these four letter words, not four, these expensive words to Faye and he, Faye responded with question marks. Yeah. And then Taurus is like, it'll contain the id thing, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's going to suppress id. Also, I have equipped your gear with a thing called system id, which will make you do awesome things. Yeah. Taurus has to only use it as a last resort. Only. Yeah. Keep that in mind. I do like how... Faye and Ellie's major drama is what to do about this whole id thing. Like they had him, they were going to encase this fucker in carbonite. And then Tara's like, oh yeah, no, I just, I just fixed that when you were, yeah, put this when you were in up. there. Yeah. You guys should have called me. I got the slap bracelet. I'd fucking slap bracelet. Tara tells us not, you know, this is a last resort, but in the next fight, Faye uses it immediately. Yeah. Just spoilers for 20 minutes from now or whatever. So there's a knock on the door. Door knock. Fuse plays. I was hoping that this was going to be Bart, but it's not Bart. Like all your friends come back, like when yeah. Frodo's in the bed. Yeah, it's been three weeks, right? Yeah, Bart's off. I don't know what it is. He's off fucking around. Yeah, he's off fucking he's around. Got, actually, Bart does have some important things to be doing. Yeah, right now. I think in the background, he is doing some business administrative stuff, which yeah. it doesn't seem like he'd be any good at. No, but he's got his. Uh, he's got his Mason. Yeah, Mason's there. Are we ever going to see Mason again? Yes. Okay, good. So, yeah, it, the, the person who has entered the door is named Shavat Emissary. Right, who immediately says. We've got problems. Yeah, we've got problems. So Lots. just, I, I imagine there being like a, gro- you know, like so in our city of Louisville, uh, the second Tuesday of every month, they play the air raid siren at 12 yeah. p.m. to test for tornadoes and stuff. I imagine that there's like a global fey consciousness siren that just <laughs> whenever he's awake, it's gone off like fucking go get him. You'd be the first one there. Get his services now. Sign him up for yep. our team. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, this emissary is saying all this stuff. He says Ave and Kislev have a peace settlement at Shavat, but it's been interrupted by Solaris mobile weapons. Yes, and I, my first reaction was, I thought we, I thought we, I thought we killed Solaris. Yeah, so that's what I did too. I mean, it, I guess it was naive to expe- to think Solaris wouldn't have the ground presence of Gebler and yeah. all like secret weapons buried all over the the earth or whatever. Yeah. So sure, I Appa- guess. Apparently, Shavat wants our help, and Tara is Dude, not okay with this. He busts in and he's like, "Fuck you, fuck you." Get out of here. Like, Asara hates Shavat anyway and hates it even more that they're, like, immediately trying to contract the recently uncomatosed Faye to go put him back in the fighting Yeah, position. it's like they, three weeks ago, they were trying to put him in Carbonite. Yeah. Right? So. You know, they're like, he, wait, you can control the thing? Where the id? You can do oh. And Tara is also very focused on the plan at hand, like this whole, the whole mass driver nanotech thing that he wants to, to accomplish. He's very focused on that and he hates Shavat. Yeah, he says, you haven't changed since then, which implies Tara's exile down here is due to a rift with Shavat. Yeah. Who says nothing the whole time? Sighton? Sighton doesn't say shit, dude. Yeah. It's he's weird. not picking a side. He's already, he, he, he spent the entire first disc trying to pick a side. Yeah. And he's, he's, yeah, he's going to let it roll. He's got nothing left to give right here. I think he may realize that Tara is smarter than him. Yeah. And I don't think we've been in a room with any of the sages. Well, I guess he was in the room with Melkware. Melkior. Melkior. Melk- no, this is Melkior. Tara is Tara Melkior. Oh, you're right. The other one's Gaspar. Yeah. Damn. Big time revelations tonight, Chris. Yep. So Ellie is Ellie kind of agrees yeah. with with uh, she mediates this. Yes, she says, "No, I'll do it. Send send Faye off to do this. I'll do the mass driver nano machine science experiment that you want to do right now." Ellie invokes the name of Bart in order to convince Faye to go help. Yeah, like don't worry, your bro is out there and he needs your help. So, despite the fact those guys wanted to freeze you in carbonite a couple of weeks ago, don't worry about that I mean, shit. Go help Bart. His friends did give him the nice send off. Yes, that's true. So, yeah, I love that he still has hostility towards Shavad. And then Ellie kind of goes half Sophia here and says she wants to do it for the world and not for the selfish Shavad people. Yes. So that's more just shade on Shavad over and over. Indeed. Saiten is also going to go with Ellie. Yeah. He will help her out with what? He brought an Omni Gear. Yeah, of course, this guy just has an Omni Gear. We could have used an Omni Gear three weeks ago, dude. Fenrir. He says he took it from Solaris and left it with Gaspar in case of an emergency. So, Fenrir is a wolf from Norse mythology, by the way. Yes. Also, if summon Final Fantasy something. Oh, don't do that to me. I'm gonna... Initializing fake net. Fenrir is an esper in Final Fantasy VI, an Eidolon in Final Fantasy IX, an Avatar in Final Fantasy XI, a Falci in Final Fantasy XIII too, and a boss in Final Fantasy XIV. So, the emissary then reveals that half of Bledovic has been destroyed. Yeah. And that Nissan will be reached in about four hours. Faye worries. Tara says that he and who fixed up Veltal with nanotech. 
It's Balthazar. Old Man Ball. I thought that Old Man Ball might be dead. Yeah, out of the skull cave that probably collapsed during the global panic. Or I wondered if maybe he was the pilot of the Calamity to test oh, us yeah. or something. Right. Yeah, you, you might want to, like, why, why didn't Faye ask about, hey, dude, like six months ago, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> was that your fault? Was that thing rogue? You almost killed us. So, also, Emeralda is here, according to Saiten. Yeah, you know why Emeralda's here? Because we are going to need another party Yeah, you need a three-person party in this video game. Yeah. Although, I don't think this party ever gets used. No, it doesn't. Maybe it, it would have at one time when this was in the planning stages when you needed three people. Yeah, I mean, huh. this would have been the first time that you would have been... If if you had to use Emeralda in the upcoming sequences, it would have been the first time that you were forced to use her. Yeah. I'm wondering if you ever are forced to use her, actually. Um, I think you are because... Well, I don't There's know. There's some we'll, stuff later. I don't remember. We'll cross that bridge. So then we go back to the forest outside of Taurus House? Yes, and then a, the cool music starts to play. I believe it is Blue Traveler. It's Blue Traveler. Yes. Uh, so then there's a panning shot around Veltal and the dark forest surrounded by sun rays, which, yeah. sta- which all, you know what this states? What? Look at my action figure. Yeah, it's cool as hell. Yeah, it's real good. It's and excellent framing. I love the, the Veltal 2, how it's become a little bulkier. Yeah. He's got some meat on him. And Boy, he's, he's been resting, bulking. He's, he's got those uh those like back booster wings looking things. Like like the like the black boxes have yeah. been built upon. They extend further back rather than their previous vertical alignment. Yeah. You know some cool shit's gonna yeah. happen with those. It's gonna come out of those, man. Yeah, and, and we're we're about to get a lot of like, for lack of a better term, masturbatory, masturbatory mecha oh, yeah. things going Absolutely. on pretty soon. And this There's is the crazy first shit. Yeah, this is the first hint of that. Masturbatory is an excellent word an, an excellent word for it because what happens later with yeah. with uh, Aguirre and Kislev is definitely that. And even even later some stuff we haven't seen yet. So yeah. Old Man Ball says, We meet again. We do. We do meet again. I didn't think I was ever going to see your ass again, dude. He immediately calls Veltal, oh, the host for the Spirit of the Slayer of God. Oh, which, yeah. Gosh, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Back then, it was just ominous. Now we're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Huh. Cool. I get it. That's good. Kind of. Launch sequence time, right? Yeah. Tara essentially says fate is the reason that they are helping Faye. And that made me wonder, does fate mean the innate programming like the gazelle have? Or is he expressing free will and the, necess- and the necessity to defy that fate? Or is that too big of a question for right now in this video game? I think it's too big of a question, but wait, is, is, is who expressing free will? Faye? Tara says that he, the reason he's helping Faye is because of fate. Oh. And is Tara basically trying to, is he unaware of what his own path is, or is he trying to defy what he thinks fate is by helping Faye? Because surely Tora and Ball, being so old, know the nature of these cycles and what can happen if it goes bad. I know and that this too. Is the last cycle. That sentence had a weird structure. I'm going to read again. I'm going to re- re- read what I wrote. Yeah. See if you interpret it the same way. I wrote, because I just wrote it as a cool line from Tara. He said, there are some cool things you can't explain with the word fate. Mm. And when I, as I was writing it down, I expected him to say, there are some things that you can explain with the word fate. But it is an awkward, I think it's an awkward phrasing, but I think that he's implying that they're all there for the, the reason of fate. Like, okay, fate, fate has brought them together. Yes, fate has brought, th- okay. brought them together. So they're not fully conscious of this and not openly defying it, but just aware that this had to happen. This yeah, way. or he's just kind of being hand wavy because he's like, he's got uh, too much other shit on his yeah. mind. Yeah, you know? he's, he's got a bunch of stuff ready to do that he's, uh, clearly the nanomachine plan he's been trying to build for the last 500 years. Has he been waiting for like, for, for 500 years for somebody to show the, up yeah, he's to like, send on a mission? I think they're going to crash here in <laughs> September, so I'm just going to wait it out. Just well, let not interfere with any of this yeah, other shit until yeah. right now. Well, so then Faye blasts off. Do you have anything else for that? Faye leaves. Yeah, there's a, a pretty cool launch sequence. He's gone, and then we are going back to a song we've heard like seven times lately, The Treasure Which Cannot Be Stolen. Yeah, it's it's putting in the work in this episode. Yeah, it is. Initializing Faye Cat. Boys, I'm not playing that song for a fourth time. Let's mix it up. Here's a similarly titled song called Radical Dreamers, Unstolen Jewel that Mitsuda composed for Chrono Cross.
So then Ellie and Sidon are on top of Tora's house. They are. And Sidon is asking Ellie if she's ready to go through with all this. Yeah. As the last time they met, she said she wanted to live quietly away from the battlefield. Yep. She kind of wants to to be apart from Faye. Mm -hmm. At least she says that to try to understand how she really feels. Yeah. After me and my wife wake up from three-week comas and we briefly like say hello and then I go fuck off and fight people and she wants to be apart. It's a very healthy relationship we have. Yeah. What what, what I do as a parent is what I do today. Like we're... You know, you're in that the snowball avalanche of life, and you're just like fuck. Uh, so what, what I did was I, t- I took a day off and I went shopping and bought new pants, oh, and I cool. was by myself for like four hours. And That's it was awesome. One, it was wonderful, and, and yeah. just, just to make sure that I was still like ready to not like murder everybody. I remember and, one time we were hanging out and you were talking about like how good it was, how nice it was to go to Target for an hour. Yeah, one day. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I, yeah. That that is my 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 father therapy. I just go and I I, I buy pants and consume. Buy Ring Fit Adventure and uh, buy a new Sonic T-shirt from Old Navy. So Ellie notes that she was running away from reality, which aren't we all, buddy? Yeah. She says she didn't know if her love for Faye was real. So soon after losing her mother and father, which good move, Ellie. Yeah. Remove yourself from the situation. You are emotionally vulnerable. Uh, both my parents are still alive, so I don't know what that's like. Same. Especially at the same time. Titan bluntly ask her something. Mm-hmm. What happened to you in the past three weeks? <laughs> Which, um, well, our second Titan bonus episode isn't out by the time we're recording this, but by the time you're hearing this... It is. The, the second one is not out. Well... Oh, it will be. This is... Okay, yeah, it will be. Yeah. Refer to our second Titan bonus episode if you want to uh, consider how... Uh, why Titan may have s- phrased the question like this. But he, he's very blunt, and he thinks that... He's like, you're kind of different. You seem different. Mm-hmm. And it, that's not a terrible thing to say to somebody but I always joke with people when, whenever somebody comes up to somebody you know in, in an office setting and, and, and says to somebody else especially to say to to a woman say you look tired today and then I will Ugh. yeah you, you don't say that to, to anybody yeah especially who somebody who might like be self-conscious about their yeah their, about appearance. their appearance like what what good does that do like if someone unless their head is down on their desk and they're passed out I don't know if you can necessarily issue that comment yeah Exactly. It's like, this is just the way I look. Sorry. Sorry I look like this. You got a problem? But he... he, he he's, Sorry I look like this. <laughs> he's kind of doing that. Um, like, no, it's just my face, dude. Yeah, we have an inside joke in the office about that, so, yeah. <clears throat> so, Saiten, yeah, like, Ellie says that they want to be apart and think about ourselves and see how they really feel, which is the, the definitely the, like, we should take a break talk, which yeah. no one ever likes to have. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't have it. He just left. Nope. She, he also says that she's matured like, like a, mother. a mother, like a mother. Okay, dude. Yeah, that's that's that reminds me of your parents like trying to hint at some obvious thing that you've realized, but they want you to say it out loud. Ellie, I want grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Fucking goddamn. Ellie's so, mildly offended here. She's like, I'm 18 years old. My yeah. Guy. So two things about that. Yeah. One, good God, if you give me that responsibility at 18, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I was yeah. still trying to figure out how to beat Xenogears. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one in the chair <laughs> again. Shit. And then second, here's a um, a weird question, Chris. Yeah. Can you think of a JRPG where it's been someone's birthday? <laughs> um, is she 18 forever? How long has it been? It hasn't been a year. Because remember, the, the beginning of the game was 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 a quick spot. Yeah, but no, like, no one when's the last time anyone had a birthday in any of these games? It's true. I can't. The only birthday party I can think of from a uh, from a video game is. God, what's the fucking French guy? The French guy game. The Jason. Guy. Oh, Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain. Yeah. yeah. Birthday in- <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Jason. I probably clipped on that. Oh, um, it's okay. Even in the third birthday, the third Paris Eve game, it wasn't her birthday. Yeah. It wasn't Aya Brea's birthday. Couldn't even go to anybody's birthday on, in Chrono Trigger. What the hell? Yeah. I mean, I guess you can go to the birth of the universe in a couple of games. So, uh, uh, Saiten laughs maniacally here. Yeah, dude. He has the laugh animation. <laughs> yeah, He's like, great. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he's like, oh, shit. Uh, and then he, he talks about how 
him and uh, and, and, and Ellie and Emeralda, she comes out of nowhere and she's yeah. like, hey, what's up? What's up? I'm here. I can kick ass. You mean to go? I'll go. I'm awesome. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Look at my hair. I like her. Yeah, they insist on going because, hey, man, we have a three-person party, probably. Yeah. And then we go back to Tora's house. So we assume they leave now to go to the mass driver yeah. thing, correct? Yep. So Tora is alone in his house. With we go the crickets. Back. Yes. There are some... I've, have you heard bugs and crickets this time? No. Like, or, or in this game ever? I don't think so. There are some bug and nature noises incorporated into the Black Moon Forest music, one yeah. of the tracks of it, but I don't think there's been isolated cricket noises yeah. at this point. So Tara is busy moving his hands. He's working on shit. Yes. But then the right side of the screen changes slightly. It, before he, before the, the screen pans, he's, he's yeah. monologuing a bit. And, or not, well, it, seemingly monologuing. Well, and he says, well, go ahead. I was going to say, it, it's really subtle because whatever it happened, it's like a slight shift of pixels moves behind the revival text. Yeah, yeah. And he says, so you were the one who brought Faye and the girl to me. I realized it the minute I saw the two of them. Why? How could I help but notice? They looked like the spitting image of you and her. Yes, just as you yourselves looked way back then. And then that's when the screen slightly pans mm-hmm. and we see Ghost Groff. He says, right, Lacan? Yep. Which is very much Mr. President at the end of Metal Gear Solid. Does this back up my statement that I thought that at the end of disc one, when when Faye was dragging Ellie's body, not body, but dragging Ellie through the forest, and then we saw the image of Groff yeah. appear that I got this wistful, sad feeling from that. Yeah, he and, had a kind of change of heart. Yeah, and that does this kind of confirm that? Like he A little bit, but it also confirms he's not a corporeal presence. Like, why is he translucent both of these times? Well, he's got, he does, maybe he's not fully phased in. I don't no, know. Yeah. Maybe he's got the, the ability like to... There astro- has to be a reason for that. Astral project, just, yeah. But if he's astral projecting, he couldn't physically bring the bloodied That's Faye true. and Ellie there. I don't know. Maybe that's just an indication of... He's a little, or just to let us know that he's a little bit different than he was before. Okay, yeah. And, of course, he never wanted to kill Faye, and he never wanted to kill Ellie no, during he, these he, times. He wanted to unlock their power. Yeah. But still, like, the fact that he doesn't even say anything, and he's addressed as Lacan, makes me feel that he's he's different here. Yeah. But then it cuts, and then we go to a Gazel Ministry sequence, right? Yes, please enjoy. What do you mean? He's still alive. Yes. Ridiculous. Didn't Ramsa shoot him down? She was also on the gear that Ramsa shot down. I won't have her die. But there is already a mother. Although she may be the anti-type, as long as the current mother exists. As far as I see it, that is not complete. Quite picky, aren't you? Didn't you say you threw away all human emotions? I don't care what you think. Anyway, as far as he is concerned, I will put Ramses onto him. Any objections? Where is he presently? The training is destroyed, but part of the memory cube is still active. We should still be able to locate individuals. Wait a moment. He has left the crash site and is heading towards Ignis. I see. So he has left the area. That means it's only a matter of time before the seal is broken. Did you say something? It's nothing. Just sit there and wait for the good news. What about retrieving the girl? The key is already beginning to resonate. The time of the resurrection is near. We can get the girl anytime. It doesn't have to be now. Let's take our time. So it opens with Krellian this time. Yeah. Krellian's there. And the Gazel Ministry is not thrilled that Faye is still alive. Dude, they're so pissed. They're so angry. They are so upset that Faye is still alive. And uh, Krillian reiterates the fact that he does not want Ellie harmed. And the Gazel don't quite get it because they already have, quote, a mother. Yes. In their scenario, I guess. It seems like maybe... Even if she's the anti-type, yes. her existence should be enough. So what... You and I know what that means. We played this game before, but what the hell are you supposed to interpret with that? I... I think you're supposed to... there's like two phase with Graf Lacan on the planet right now, right? Like yeah. And so... Two ma- contacts-ish. Yeah. And the, so apparently both Krellian and the Ministry need a mother thing for their uh, particular god revival scenario. Yeah. And there must be two. 
The reason that Faye is still alive, Krellian says, is because Ellie was in Faye's gear and he will not have Ellie die. That's not particularly tr- true either, because it... <laughs> Remember, Ramses forgot. Yeah, when he shot him down, he forgot. Well, but if, if you're if you're selling it to your co-conspirators, yeah. you're like, no, this is what happened here. Yeah. It wasn't the person who you said couldn't get it done. Yeah, but yeah, the, the Gazel do say they only need one mother, and and Ellie doesn't particularly matter, matter to them because of that other one. And they also mention that the 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 key is resonate resonating, and the resurrection is coming, and all these different things about the impending finality of of everything. Yeah. It, they mentioned the Solaris memory cube is still active, which I guess it survived the crash or something. The thing that's feeding them all the data. Yeah, that that's their NSA their thing. Jumbo screen, yeah, <laughs> their, the, their, their whisper net. Yeah. Their uh, carnivore program. Yes. There is a little, I go, the study guide has a slight difference in that line. The study guide, the actual line says, what about retrieving the girl? The key is beginning to resonate. The time of God's revival is drawing near. Wow. Which is different from the time of the resurrection a little bit. Yeah. So that's a little bit more clear on that. And then Krellian says that they're going to get Ramses to solve this problem yeah. right away. And do you remember how they take that? Are they like, what? What? Yeah. They're saying, uh, I mean, Ramses did kind of just almost succeed at something for like, he didn't get the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. Right? For once. So like, they're kind of hemming and hawing about this and Krellian tells them not to worry and to take their time. Does this mean Krellian's going to do them dirty? Because clearly it's time to worry. Yeah. It seems like he's... He's got what he needs. Yeah. It feels like he's had what he's needed for a while because he, he's a, remember he was gloating about the fact that he had Emeralda. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm good. I've got her. I've got, I'm good. All I need is, is Ellie. So maybe they, so. They keep mentioning the key too. And I'm, and I'm starting to wonder what the keys like once they insert it, is it going to execute operation master plan, like unearth something, resurrect something? I think there's some stuff later that give us a, f- a few hints. I know. About I'm that. just trying to like figure out yeah. like, cause this is, they mentioned the Geisha key back, I think during the Kislev Gazel sequences. Yeah. So they're seeding this throughout the game. Krillian also seems to be okay with the fact that the seal may be broken here. Yeah. Which I don't know if he's talking about this plan that Ellie and them are about to execute. Yeah. But nonetheless, he seems like he's fine with the way things are going from the like Team Faye perspective. Like, eh, don't worry about them. All we need is Ellie. So yeah. not quite sure yet. And then I think that's it. That's it. That's everything. Yeah. Rear ending shot down here. We will pick up with break the seal. Once the seal starts breaking. So now that we're doing this, uh, I just thought of a segment for this, a yeah. segment title. Yeah. Check in with the real net. Check in with the real net. Yeah. Yeah. The real net. Initializing real net. We're going to have to carry that because this is only going to happen for disc two. So we're going to have to, we're gonna, are we, are we going to continue to call it the real net in our next game? Possibility. Okay. Well, unless another game has another fake that we don't understand in episode one, we can apply to the rest of the episode. That's true. Okay. Fate has aligned this path. Okay, we have one listener tonight, by the way. Cool. But luckily, it's one of our most knowledgeable ones. So let's consult the real net. Okay. Initializing real net. Carfo, member of the real net, points out that the Gazel uh, do exist in the fishbowl ship. In the, uh, it's okay. called the, the Ezekiel. Yeah, it's called the right. Ezekiel. So they're there with Kane, so that's why they're okay. Okay, so Kane is located there as well. Yes. So I wonder how he got... Yeah, I, I mean, all the ships were in Solaris that one time yeah. for that ceremony. I just assumed that he would live there, but I guess that he need, needs to have the valuables offsite. You think they would back those guys up somewhere too? Yeah. Carfo also po- points out the fact that the game says at some point, and, and I, I, I'm starting to remember this as well, that Etronac blew up, but not the whole country. Dude, it, it crashed. I know, but that's what, that, that's what, I don't remember if it was one of the, the Gazel or Krellian or somebody talked about how Etronac was destroyed. If you say so, man. But. <laughs> I just, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I guess that whole structure was that. I guess there could be multiple structures, but. Yeah. It just, it seemed like there was some finality to that last time. Like, oh, Solaris is toast. Also, I don't know if we ever did this, but have we ever talked about how the, the painting of Sophia is kind of like the Mona Lisa from the perspective and everything? It's very evocative of the Mona Lisa if you think about it now. I got a C minus in art history in college. Oh. But, but you know, the Mona, Li- Mona Lisa though, sure. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they, it's kind of the same perspective. The, 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 the same. Secretly a man self-portrait, right? Right. Sure. Uh, well, no, that's not, that's not true. Okay. Illuminati, whatnot. No, I didn't realize that. That is actually a pretty neat fact. I think Carfo agrees with this. He says, regarding the context memories, just like Ellie, they are both capable of remembering their past lives, but I think they need to get to a certain point before they can become aware of it. Mm, which is kind of a discovery ha- meditation. Yeah. Christ Aeon sounds like a Final Fantasy X summon that couldn't yeah, get made. Dude. Yeah. Uh, regarding Faye and Ellie meeting each other at the right time, the game takes place over 9,999 years after the ship at the beginning of the game crashed. I think there are people who just like we said, 
never meet. And then that timeline of resurrecting goes into the next of resurrecting or doing the God killing resurrecting they cycle. Die at 18. Yeah. The next generation seems to just have to hope that they meet each other. Faye does say something where he remembers a lot of past lives, but we're only shown a few of them. Emerald is extremely strong despite never getting an Omni gear. Yeah. And, and that's it for this episode, Eric. That's it, Chris. Thank you for coming to the basement tonight, Eric. And thank you to our patrons. If you would like to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash retro AM. Stay tuned for the outtakes. Follow us on Twitter at retro amnesia pod. Send us an email at retrogradeamnesiapodcast at gmail.com. Thank you, Mark. Shepard. For the intro track, it sounds great. Until next time. Yes, we will kill God. And now you may go back to sleep. Directly on them. These don't pick you gotta up. Gotta project into it. Oh yeah. See, when you project into it, then I turn you down, and then when you stop projecting it. So I fucked the average on, on the test, basically. Yeah, yeah. You you fucked up the the you, you fucked up the curve. Closer? Yeah. yeah. This close? Yeah. Since yeah. last fall I've been dropping shit all the time with my right hand and I can't figure out why. And then it started hurting really bad on Tuesday and I realized that Monday I had been editing a podcast for six hours straight. Oh, you get stand up. Yeah. Like I, I, I think it's gripping the mouse without letting go with like a fucking death grip. So I just have to do like hand exercises or something. I, <laughs> last, last time I had tendon damage from, uh, from anything was because I read, uh, the entire death note manga in like on a toilet uh no on the phone that was the problem oh. uh so it was and, and that thing's like 200 volumes or i mean 200, 200 chapters or something and i read it in like a in like a week and a half yeah and i had to do, i had to get one of those uh the ball thing squishy ball squishy, things yeah, yeah i'm gonna have to look into that and start doing that every 20 minutes or some shit it hasn't burst but a little bit came out I work down here, mm. so the solution is to get convert one of the kids' bedrooms into your office, and then make this the full blown podcast studio. We're turning your bedroom back into the computer room. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, I helped you move the desk down. No, but do you remember that song? Oh no, yeah, that's a song. It was a Tim and Eric thing where this guy was singing oh. to his daughter, "We're turning your bedroom back into the computer." I room. never saw Tim and Eric. Oh. That was after I stopped having cable. Oh okay. Oh yeah, Carfo's up in this piece. All hey right. man. Follow us on Twitter, Retrograde Amnesia Podcast at G... No, follow us... Let the shit out of that clip. Okay. Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. I got the slap bracelet. I'd fucking slap bracelet. So... <coughs> Don't what... start talking until I'm done coughing. <coughs> Sorry. I'm good. Are you sure about that? I think you're going to die, Chris. <coughs> no, man. Uh, I so, need some water. Do you want to get some water? No, there's some right over there, I think. Well, if you say no and go get it, that's that's the opposite, Chris. No, I mean, I don't need to go get it. You just got up and got it. No, no. You fuck. I thought you meant Stop going. fucking with me. I need to go upstairs and get it. No, I just... Can't fool me. I saw you. I, I tried I... to convince Chris Smith that uh, Rafe Fine's name is spelled like Ralph, but it's pronounced Rafe, and he refused to believe me. I don't know why I just thought of that. <sighs> Should I get rid of those Ren and Stimpy things? Because John K's bad. Yeah, he's a fucked up pervert. Um, no, I think art can exist independent of its creator. Rosemary's Baby is a fine film. Uh, okay. So, Tara tells us... Okay, we're back on. Let me check Discord again. Yep, still going in. Carfo said he's listening with one earbud while doing cool. shit. I guess you... Yeah, you can... I, I listen with one earbud all day with my podcast. I had to listen to one ear earbud the other day because my earbuds wouldn't sync. Oh, wireless earbuds. Look at Mr. Fancy over here. Uh, they're like fucking $40 ones. Gotta heat this up. Two below the weed number. It's cold. Ellie invokes. That's the right way to use that word, right? I think so, okay. yeah. Your kids could probably hula hoop the ring fit. I just thought of that. Yeah. He doesn't assume their personalities, but it actually gives a person. Oh, I burped. <laughs> It kind of flows in a fay. You have no respect, Arthur. Arthur, what are you doing? Okay. Then we go to the Nithon. Nithon. 
Nithon. And we're Neath- I was thinking about hacking snot out, and I guess I said <laughs> Nithon instead. This is this is why you should listen to us record live. Yep, we're gonna edit that out. So, Tara. Yes. One of the three stages of Shavat. Stages. One of the three sages. Time. Look at how you spike the fucking. Okay. Chris Redfield. Jill Valentine. Mary Burton. Rebecca Chambers. Wesker Resident Evil